Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about body fat scales. Those are the kind of trendy new scales that everyone's buying that calculate various different things including your body fat. I've bought the Garmin S2s. I'm very happy with some of the functions of them but I want to make it clear how we can best get them kind of calibrated and how we can get them working properly because you might be disappointed with some of the functions straight out the box and I'm going to explain why but don't worry there are fixes for these things. So if you don't know what I'm talking about this is the beautiful set of Garmin S2s. Uh, it's pretty reflective so you might struggle to see with the, the photography light behind but basically really really nice looking They've got a sort of glass type reflective grey surface and other than that there's not much to see. You can see on the back there there's a, a button there for pounds or kilos and then there's a battery compartment and there's a reset button and then of course got the feet. It does come with some optional feet if you want to use it on carpet and it just gives you a bit more depth to the feet so you kind of get a better reading but the the heads up with these is don't use them on carpet you know try and get them on a hard floor that's going to give you the most accurate reading so why did I choose the Garmin's I think you guys probably know if you watch the channel have I like Garmin watches I've got a slightly different one on there review coming up on that that's the new Instinct X tactical pretty cool review coming um, I wanted to get a pair of scales that would sync with my Garmin app so I use that app you know to record all my bike rides to record my workouts I log my sleep patterns my HRV and all that kind of thing it's very very useful uh, I have got a review on the original Garmin Instinct 2 which goes a bit more in depth about how I log some stuff and I'm not going to go crazy on that. There's a guy called DC Rainmaker that if you want to go in-depth on Garmin stuff and look at every single function and how to use it all, uh, check out that guy. He will go through it all and you know he, he makes some really informative videos. They're pretty much a user guide. Uh, but here we're just going to have a discussion on how we can get the best out of these. So what do I like about these? As a set of scales, they're great and they do connect wirelessly very very easily to the Garmin app so all I have to do is stand on these and straight away all that information then gets automatically sent to my Garmin app and I'll stick some charts up in a minute that you can see from the app that just basically log all my weight loss I kind of wish I'd bought these a long time ago I wish I'd bought them when I started my uh, weight loss because obviously I was very very fat and that would have been good to actually log the progress and see how the weight kind of came down in stages. The problem I've got now is that I'm not particularly fat, so my weight isn't fluctuating massively, and some of the other measurements here don't fluctuate massively in terms of real world, but what you will see uh, in these charts is they do appear to fluctuate, and I'll tell you why that happens as well. So, other than ease of use and you know getting my weight from them what else did I want well what I was really interested in is logging body fat and these log a series of different uh, you know metrics in here including body fat they also do BMI uh, body fat skeletal muscle mass bone mass and body water and they also strangely give you the weather, which may or may not be useful. You know, you could have a look in the morning and, and see what the day holds weather-wise. But I was most interested in body fat. Now, I bought these kind of knowing what was going to happen because I've got some understanding of body fat measurement. So back in the day, we all used to, when we were bodybuilding, used to use calipers to do body fat measurements. And with calipers, you just get some, a skin fold, you know, pinch it in, it's a certain technique which is very important you have to have someone that does it the same every time and understands the technique and you use these calipers on various different parts of the body and that will give you then an equation to work out your body fat and they are quite good in the hands of people that actually know what they're doing if you don't know what you're doing with calipers you're going to get a reading that's way way off so these scales kind of look like they're going to be a really good idea you know if people don't want to start learning how to use calipers they look like they're going to be a really easy way to gauge body fat 
Now, this is where the problems come in. So scales like these send a charge through the body and depending on how much impedance that has, you know, how it can get through various densities of tissue and then comes back again, that will give an idea of how much muscle mass you're carrying, how much bone you're carrying, etc, etc. The issue with that is it uses an algorithm and that algorithm has to be kind of based on the average person. So if you're out of average person territory, you know, if you're six and a half foot tall or incredibly muscular or three and a half foot tall, you know, all these different things are going to make a difference. If you've got um, freakishly big bone density, we're all very different. So if you're lucky enough to be, you know, a five foot eight male of medium build and not particularly muscular and everything's average about you, then they might give you a pretty accurate reading. But, you know, if you're completely average and pretty lean and stuff, you're probably not that interested in monitoring your body fat, etc. Anyway, it's going to be the people that are kind of on the outsides of the average that are more interested, like people that are very overweight or people that are trying to build a lot of muscle athletes etc etc none of them are going to easily fall into that average category and because of you know this sort of algorithm that it uses to compute these things based on an average person they're going to be way off when it comes to someone like me standing on it so for example when I first stood on these things and asked them for my body fat I think it came in at about 20 percent something like that and at the time, I actually had visible abs, I had visible, visible vascularity, I was clearly sub 15%, you know, probably bordering on 10. And I thought, okay, you know, I kind of knew that was going to happen. And, and that's the issue. If you look at the reviews, a lot of people have had, they just assume that these things are going to automatically give them a bang on body fat percentage. And in fact, some people that don't even know that, that's kind of a dangerous thing because if you jump on these scales and they tell you you're 20% and you start dieting like crazy and doing tons of cardio trying to get your body fat down and you could actually get into pretty dangerous territory there. So uh, being naive to that would possibly you know, make quite an unhealthy lifestyle for someone if they really tried to get down into single digits. And I have met people that have done that. So it's not a good idea. So first understand that that figure is going to be very lightly off. So what can we do about that? Well, the good news is that we can go into this app and you can actually calibrate the body fat in the app. So if I go into my Connect app and then I go into down at the bottom Garmin devices and if you've already connected your Garmin devices, you will find an index S2 and then you can go into user settings and there you can see you have your weight setting, uh, weight goal, height, gender and set body composition and in set body composition it actually has a body fat percentage and a skeletal muscle mass percentage and you can input that manually. So what I did was I went and got my calipers out and uh, I basically did some body fat measurements on myself and I got a reading of about 12%, which was much, much more realistic based on what I could see in the mirror. Like I said, visible abs, etc. you're going to be below 15%. I then input that 12% into the app there and that will then kind of calibrate these scales to know, okay, this guy's body fat is currently at 12%. Every time you then jump on them after that, the readings you get will be with that as a baseline and the algorithm will then kind of see if you've deviated from that one way or the other. So it's quite good in those terms that if you put that in to start with, it will monitor your body fat getting higher and it will monitor your body fat getting lower. So if I wanted to get down to 9% body fat, that would be a pretty good way of looking at it. So I kind of knew I would have to calibrate these to start with. And once I'd done that, they were pretty accurate. Now, I'll caveat, caveat pretty accurate because, again, a lot of people may not understand, you know, if I'm going to throw some charts up. So I'll start throwing the charts up on here and you can have a look. But you'll see, for example, my weight appears to go up and down. And that 
would scare a lot of people. You know, you might think, wow, the weight's going up and down. I must have eaten loads of donuts that the day I did that on the morning and then weighed afterwards. And then the next day I starved myself. No, actually all of our weights go up and down every single day. It depends, have you taken a weight in the morning? You know, have you taken the measurement in the evening? What's your physical activity been like that day? What have you had to eat or drink before or after? Have you been to the toilet? Because if you consume a litre of water, that weighs something that's in your body, that's taking up density, that's messing with the kind of density calculations that these scales are doing. If you've had you know, a, a great big meal and then you've just weighed yourself, that's going to mess with it. Uh, just the fact that you weigh more from the fact that that food is sitting within you or if you, you've done the opposite and you've just been to the toilet, you know, and you've got rid of a load of weight, that's going to have an effect as well. So one of the things you can do, you know, I tend to weigh myself in the morning and in the evening, and then that gives you a pretty good balance. And what you'll see is the graphs are kind of doing this kind of thing, but then you can expand it over time. And if you look back over a year, you if you wanted to gain muscle, for example, you would see the graph kind of doing this pattern because you, you're going up and down every day with these random sort of losses and gains. But eventually you're going to see a trend that runs in an upward direction. And the same thing for body fat, you know, you're going to see that go up and down maybe even more because it's reliant on all the sorts of water compositions and stuff like that in the body and that's going to appear to change. It's not massive changes, it's a couple of percent either way, but you're definitely going to see fluctuations. So it's not going to be this perfect graph and that's completely normal. You know, that's not the fault of the scales, that's just the nature of taking these type of measurements. If you stood on a non-digital set of scales you would get these similar readings and if you calipered yourself for body fat you would get similar readings because sometimes we hold more water other times we don't it depends how much salt we've eaten how much water we've consumed have you just worked out if you're female your hormones are going to play a part in that you know you might find at certain times of the month you hold a lot more water and you kind of look less defined and then other times you look really ripped and you're going to be holding less water that's utterly normal so don't panic about that and what you should be looking at is a trend over time so look at over six months or a year or something like that and you're going to see these trends going up or going down and they're going to tell you if you're going in the right direction so do not get hung up on the day-to-day -day or even week-to-week -week changes that you're going to see if it goes up and down a few pounds or it goes up and down a couple of percent, it's no big deal. My BMI, I don't like BMI as a score for the individual. Uh, if you guys understand what BMI is, again, it's another calculation based on your height and based on your weight. It's a great measurement for epidemiology, which is a study of population. So if you have a look at a population, it gives you a pretty good idea you know, if that population in general, based on the average person, if they're overweight or not on BMI. The reason it doesn't work is exactly the same reason that these scales aren't going to be exactly correct for every single individual, that that calculation is based on an average male and an average female. So if I do a BMI calculation on myself, or if, say if you did a BMI calculation on Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was back in the day, he would have been grossly obese according to BMI. But of course, you could see him on stage, you could literally see his skin was pretty much paper thin, he didn't have an ounce of body fat on him. So there was no way you could have argued that that guy had you know too much body fat. And I've even been to the doctor and they told me my BMI is too high. And I literally took my shirt off at the time when I was bodybuilding building and said well where, where am I going to lose the fat from and the doctor was kind of perplexed you know that concerns me if you're perplexed by that I wonder where you got your medical degree from but these accurate um, these BMI measurements are not useful for an individual so I would just forget about that straight away so guys these Garmin scales are excellent they're very very user friendly if you want to track your stats and you understand the kind of data that you're getting, they're really useful. If you're someone that just wants to sand on a set of scales and you don't really understand any of those stats and you don't want to understand them, I would avoid looking at these type of scales because you're going to get kind of frightened when you see things going up and down and think, oh my God, my body fat's gone up a percentage 
and you know that could put people in a bad frame of mind when actually if they just understood that that's a natural variation that's going to happen all the time that they're not going to be too bothered about it so they're very useful if you understand what you're getting out of them i hope that helps i hope that helps you to kind of calibrate your scales they are an awesome buy i would definitely recommend these garments if you're already using the connect app and you run a garmin watch they're definitely a good buy because it all ties in and it helps you kind of build a, a better profile and a better picture of your overall health. If, like me, you were kind of annoyed with the Connect app because it was flagging me up as be a high BMI and being obese all the time, so that was basically throwing out things like my fitness age. It was saying that my fitness age was really high because I was too fat, and then being able to put a body fat into those scales, that then kind of tells the app oh this guy isn't fat he's got a 11 percent body fat or whatever and that then recalibrated things like my fitness age so it corrected some of the errors that were going on where the app was keep telling me to lose weight all the time so if that's a pain for you i definitely recommend getting the garmin scales because it will feed that info straight in there they're 120 pounds or thereabouts which i don't think is particularly outrageous given the technology you literally just stand on them and they're connecting to the Wi-Fi and then spitting all that information straight into the app on your phone. So I'm super impressed with that. Ease of setup was super duper, you know, no problem. I, I've got no issue with that at all. So get these if you want to understand those metrics. If not, just uh, I wouldn't even bother weighing yourself. You know, if you're not bothered to understand any of that and you're, not, you're kind of going to be anxious and worried about weight fluctuation, just rely on your clothing, how tight it is, and uh, don't worry too much about your weight going up and down. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. I'll talk to you soon.